Amir and Ben had a total of five sandwiches. How do we write this using variables? We can write it as a plus b equals 5 where a and b are the number of sandwiches each of them had. With just this information, will we be able to tell the number of sandwiches each of them had individually? Well, we cannot. It can be 1 plus 4 or 2 plus 3 or 0 plus 5 maybe. The point is that there are multiple possibilities if we have just this equation. Now let's say I tell you that Ben had three more sandwiches than Amir. In the variable form, this can be written as Ben had three more than Amir. Now can we tell the exact number of sandwiches each of them had? Yes. Based on both these equations, we can say that Amir had one sandwich and Ben had four. Three more than Amir and the total is five sandwiches. These are linear equations in two variables. There are two variables in each equation and both of them have a degree 1. So to get the value of two variables, you need two equations. But how do we solve for the values of A and B? Let's move on to a new page to understand that. These are the two equations we have and we need to find the value of A and B. One way in which we can do that is write one variable in terms of the other and then substitute it in the other equation. Here, fortunately we have B in terms of A. So we can substitute this value in place of B in the first equation. We get A plus A plus 3 equals 5. Solving this, we get the value of A as 1. Once we get the value of one variable, we can easily substitute it in the other equation and get the value of the other. Substituting the value of A here, we get the value of B as 1 plus 3 which is 4. This was one of the ways. You get one variable in terms of another and substitute it. There's another interesting way. The first equation we have is A plus B equals 5. And in the second equation, if we transpose a to the left, we can write it as minus a plus b equals 3. Now all we need to do is add these two equations. a plus minus a gives us 0, b plus b gives us 2b and 5 plus 3 equals 8. We get the value of b as 4. Once we get the value of b as 4, we can substitute it in any of the equations to get A. Substituting it in the first equation, we get A plus 4 equals 5 and we get the value of A as 1. We got the same answer, but we just arrived at it differently. The first method will work every time, but may get a bit tedious. The second method is relatively quicker, but we were lucky here as the variable A had opposite sides in each and it was cancelled out. If you think we are going fast, please go through our background tutorials where we have explained everything in depth. Is there another way in which we can solve two equations? Look at these two equations. Pause the video and try solving for the value of A and B. Okay, if you would have used the first method, you would have been neck deep in fractions and that is a bad idea. We cannot use the second method as any of the variables are not cancelling out. So the only hope we have is modifying the equations which is in the third method. Let's number the equations first. Let this be the first equation and this be the second one. Now let's think a bit. If we multiply the first equation by 2, we will get a plus 6b here. Then we can simply add them and eliminate the b. So multiplying equation 1 by 2 gives us 4a plus 6b equal to 16, which can be our third equation. We simply multiplied each term by 2. To get rid of b, 
we can write the second equation under the third one and add them. 4a plus 3a is 7a, b cancels out and 16 plus 7 is 23. This gives us the value of a as 23 by 7. To get the value of b, we can substitute this value in any of the equations. If we substitute it in the first equation, it results in this. Solving this gives us the value of b as 10 by 21. So in the third method, we just modified an equation and got the values of the variables in just two steps. And yes, sometimes we may even need to modify both equations.